1996. I was 23 years old and I shared an apartment with some friends in, by Twin Lakes Beach in Santa Cruz. I had just finished college the year before and after four long years of studying hard, I just wanted to cut loose and have fun. Um, as a matter of fact, at that point, having fun was my chief purpose in life. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. as things turned out, there were um, three strapping young men who were brothers who moved into the uh, same apartment complex building. And these young men, they knew a lot about having fun, okay? <laughs> as a matter of fact, um, they were having a great time. They were good at having a great time. And one little incident I remember they did is they uh, were playing frisbee, but they decided to climb up on the roofs of the neighbors and throw the frisbee back and forth from house to house. And then the lady who lived there came out and said, well, get off my roof. And we thought, gee, she's a crabby old lady. I thought, Beck, can you blame her? <laughs> she is. Anyway, I, you know, we look back and we shake our heads, don't we? <laughs> At least I do. Um, being young and naive as I was, I just went right along with them. It wasn't long before one of them became my boyfriend, and his name was Jim. Being inexperienced as I was, I really didn't know what I was getting into with three virile young men. I also didn't know anything about being treated with respect or setting boundaries for myself. I was a clueless young person. <laughs> it was an abusive relationship, and he had a temper like a volcano. He would grab me by the shoulders and shake me sometimes. If things didn't work out right for him, he would throw a fit. Um, and he was constantly criticizing me and telling me how he wanted me to behave myself. There were constant quarrels and difficulties in our relationship. As well, um, his two brothers were also good at throwing rages of fits. But I was really, really, really mm -hmm. After a while, in April of that year, I noticed I was late with my monthly cycles. So I went down to Planned Parenthood and I asked for a pregnancy test. They surprised, they were surprised by my request because for the most part they were getting young ladies who wanted birth control. They ran the pregnancy test and I nervously waited for the results. To my great relief, she came back and told me that I wasn't pregnant. I felt as if a gentle breeze of fresh air had burst inside my heart. But, she advised me, if you don't have your period again, then the next time you should have it, I advise you to see a doctor. Well, another month rolled by, and guess what? I still didn't have my period. So I went to see the doctor at Santa Cruz Health Department. I, I'm going to run a pregnancy test on you just to make sure, the nurse explained. But my parent who had already told me I wasn't pregnant. I protested. A few minutes later, she came back. You're pregnant, she exclaimed. Um, oh my God, what am I going to do? I freaked out and I was frightened. So I went to my boyfriend's house and he was just about to leave somewhere in his car when I approached him. Oh, yes, you fill in the blank. He, he said the S A for it, okay? He screamed. <laughs> and he screeched down the road, leaving skid marks. I had shown him the slip of paper with the positive results for pregnancy. A little while later, he came back and said that I needed to get an abortion and he would pay for it. Nonetheless, there was something inside of me that wouldn't let me do that. I believe there was a spirit of Christ at me in me at that time. It wasn't strong, you know, I was a nominal Christian, as you could guess. What another woman may do in such a desperate, distraught situation may be well to get an abortion. I won't fault her for that. I know how frantic and overwhelmed a woman may feel. Um, when I first wrote this and I wrote it, read it to my sister, she told me to put this in. She had had an abortion. Plus, I have another sister who was an abortionist. So I kind of come from a crazy cockeyed family. However, um, it's true. I don't want to make women feel badly for what they may have done. I, I, that's not my job in life or what I did. However, I knew I would have a hard time looking in the mirror if I went through with it. In the meantime, Jim, my boyfriend, 
repeatedly tried to persuade me to have an abortion. After about three weeks, he knew I wasn't going to be persuaded, so he packed up his belongings and moved to Wyoming. He gave me some nonsense about being there being nothing here for him in Santa Cruz and that he needed to go find himself. What about me, I whimpered. I'm in Santa Cruz. Yeah, but you won't be beautiful to me when you're fat and pregnant, he replied. So this was, um, I learned some hard knocks that day. I learned that as long as times are good and things are fun, good time friends will come around. But when things get a little bit challenging and there are adversities, your good times friend will melt away like the, the snowflakes in the sun. I was terrified and I had nowhere to turn. So I told you, you've got to get me through this because I'm keeping this baby for your sake. Somehow, I knew that the strength inside me to not get an abortion was because of him. The time came when I needed to tell my mother I was pregnant. I was feeling very ambivalent about calling her with the news. I seriously thought she didn't like me uh, when I was younger. Um, she said, was, is an aloof kind of person and a critical perfectionist. I remember walking to the phone booth across the street from my apartment. It was like trying to put distance between myself and the phone call I had to make. I was certain that my mother would severely reprimand me and be ashamed of me. My finger, fingers trembled as I put the dime into the slot and I dialed her number. Hello, Mom? I quivered. I'm pregnant. Um, I was expecting a tirade of condemnation from her, but what I got was, well, congratulations. You're going to have a baby. And she seemed genuinely happy to hear that. A few weeks later, she asked to, that if just she and I could go on a camping trip to Baimano Lake. It would be just she and I, and I was completely flabbergasted. She never wanted to spend time with me. So we went, and as we drove along, she recounted a tale to me that I'd never heard before. It was a story about how she needed a place to stay when she had three small children and she was trying to break out of a bad marriage. She came to stay with her mother in Montana with her children, but her mother did not want three small preschool kids around. She forced my mother to put us in foster homes until she could get on her feet. In the meantime, her mother made sure that she knew she was very unwelcome. In her way, my mother was trying to say, say to me, I'll be there for you. I just didn't know that how much, know how, that she cared. I seriously didn't. I seriously didn't think she was She even invited me to stay at her cabin in Ben Lomond so as to keep watch on the place. Instead of being deserted and abandoned, I now had a permanent place to stay. This was in July, and I still had another five or six months to endure a long, lonely pregnancy. There were many days when I wept tears of heartbreak and hopelessness. But then on Christmas Eve, my water broke. I was going into labor. I travailed and grunted and gasped all through the night and at about 3 p.m. on Christmas Day, I delivered an absolutely beautiful baby boy. Um, he looked like the Peerless Fairy Doe boy, and with an eager and very happy spirit. He was as eager to be with me as I was pleased to be with him. This indeed made me very happy. I always told my son that he was the best Christmas present I had ever received, and I wear him like a crown. Recently, my son called me up and he said that he had a visit from his dad. Man, Mom, he blurted. I'm sure glad that I didn't grow up with that uh, man around. He threw fifth whenever he didn't get his way. The only person he was thinking about was his, his self. He told me to meet him at, uh, for pizza at 7, but he doesn't show up till 8 in the evening when I had already a long week and was very tired. Then he helped himself to all the pizza that my wife and I had ordered. In conclusion, I would say that sometimes um, our lives can look so desperate and bound for destruction. 
but actually things are really being worked out for the best. That's my goodness. That's awesome. Okay, so <coughs> you know. is there something I'm supposed to say when I light this candle? No, you just light it. Yeah, it's basically, yeah, I got to push oh, that yeah, forward. Push that yep. Done. Here you start it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, yeah, it's just a joint effort here. There you go. Very okay. cool. Thank you so much. Yay. <clears throat> Thank you so very much. Hi, how are you feeling, Cece? Better. Good. <laughs> Wow, we got lots of goodies. Because <laughs> we brought donuts and now you brought some cake. And Oh, my goodness. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? I'm doing better. Okay. Oh, you yeah. Get up there. There we go. I'm trying a new way of doing music here. I had, I had printed up song sheets and then yesterday... I snuck off to the store and didn't let Debbie know that I bought this little adapter so I could do this thing. So that's straight out of my iPad, straight up to the computer. So, <coughs> Said the night wind to the little lamb, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb. Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. With a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, Do you hear what I hear? Riding to the sky, shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high up in the trees, with a voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. Shed the shepherd boy to the mighty king, do you know what I know? In your palace, warm, mighty king. Do you know what I know? A child, a child, shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere, listen to what I say, pray for peace people everywhere, listen to what I say, child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light. And that right there is the message of Christmas. Hmm? Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful song, but boy, so challenging to sing sometimes. In fact, let me bring it down some. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. And the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees. 
is oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ was born oh night oh night oh night oh night divine so much for technology right led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand and by the light where are we at here the star is shinily gleaming it's man from Orient land the king of kings lay Thus in lowly manger in all our trials born born to be our friend fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh now divine oh nine when Christ was born oh night oh night oh night oh night divine truly he taught us to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace chain shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppressed shall so sleep Sweet hymns of joy when grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name fall on your knees oh hear the angel voice Christ was born oh night divine oh night oh night divine thank you Lord we made it <laughs> oh it's one of my favorites too just um, I'm so glad we have this transposer on there because otherwise, we'd be singing, Up on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices. Get the hat pin, oh, night. Aren't you glad we don't have to sing quite that high? <laughs> <laughs> and this next song is a, is a, it's a promotion for uh, Tuesday night. We're going to have a Christmas Eve candle lighting service in here. You're all welcome. Invite your friends. It's not going to be real complicated. We're just going to sing songs. And we're going to have a, a time where we're to, while we up uh, with Silent Night, we're going to turn off all the lights. 
and we're going to light the candles and just let the... And, and it always amazes me when, as the light gets passed from candle to candle to candle to candle, how bright it gets in the room. And even though we're not many in number, I think you'd be surprised how much light there will be. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, around yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory. Stream from heaven afar, heavenly host sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. Silent night. Holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beam from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. I love that. <coughs> I really love it when I when I can hear somebody on a guitar play it, because that's when it was that's the way it was originally performed. Mm-hmm. The organ broke, you know. Those old fancy pipe organs they they require a lot of maintenance, and so on that night they actually sang it with a guitar. I always love that. Um, a couple of churches ago, they had the tradition on on Christmas Eve that we did we did Silent Night in different languages. So we had we did English, obviously we did Spanish. One guy sang it in German. We had a couple of ladies who were from Hawaii who actually sang it in Hawaiian. I suggested a language and they rejected it. I lit nay sight nay. Oli he aitne, big Latin. They rejected it. I think with that, let's take a little time out to go grab some snacks because there's plenty of them back there. Seriously, it's snack time. I also printed up copies of the scriptures we're going to be going over. If you want to grab a copy, so that way you can grab your pen and you can mark it up. Yeah.
Would you want to split this with me? Sure, I'll split that with you. Yeah. That way we could kind of keep, yeah. keep the... It takes time to regain yes, exactly. yeah. it. Which one do you like? Yes. Yes. Since that one's not on the napkin, so I'll just grab it. Okay. <laughs> that looks good. It's so long. So, so long. I'm going to grab some of that. Well, I'm on antibiotics now. Thank God. I've had a chest cold going, in fact, two to three before four weeks. Here, half a bite. Thank you. She gave me the Z pack, so I'm taking the Z pack. And I didn't want no antibiotics because back in October, I had an abscess, and she gave me a pedicure. Cool, cool. Yay! She I'm going to grab some of that cake. <laughs> Donuts will probably come home. <laughs> I'm eyeballing that cake. I'm not sure if I want to grab a piece of that cake. I've been on soup. Yeah. 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 Okay. You know, let me get that. I'm trying to give you the other plate. Mm-hmm. I'm fine now, but and the diarrhea just doesn't so we had to take the sink because I I got like a slack moment. Oh yeah, I really got that's why I'm using the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd think I would be somewhat immune from all this stuff because I work from home. So I don't go to work and have to bring home germs. Grandkids do it for us. <laughs> they bring the germs. That's, that's, they, they live in the house with us. So, you have, um, but that's just it. I hadn't been anywhere. That's what the doctor asked me on Friday. Because I went to the doctor again on Friday. I've been going to the doctor every two weeks. Oh, wow. Every two weeks. Since, believe it or not, every two, three weeks. Since uh, October. Wow. But yeah, school started in August. And they had colds and stuff going through their family. Since then, and I finally got it this week, but I've got very mild, just one day I felt horrible, and I've been on the men since. Oh, good morning, there she is. Yeah, had that. Almost looks good. What do you mean, almost? It does look good. <laughs> I don't know if there's something in those or not. Could be. These are the kind you don't inhale or you uh, choke yourself. <laughs> There's festive donuts. Yeah, that's very good. Very colorful donuts. If you want to take later on, if you guys want to take some donuts home with you, please. <laughs> well, we brought the donuts. Yeah. I think it'd be kind of mean to put a sign at the at the uh, baker's that says uh, "Lead us not into temptation." <laughs> and a cup. I think this one's my cup. Yep. <clears throat> I 
Oh, yes. Who got this? This looks really good. Oh, yeah, it's really good. It's, we try to rebuke all the calories. It doesn't work. <laughs> Definitely adjusting and making some friends and kind of getting into the groove. The only thing we hear now is she's in like the food. <laughs> it's not gated, but it's a senior mm-hmm. facility for those who are ambulatory. You know, and so, you know, there's probably varying stages of some memory mm-hmm. and, and conditions, but you know, for that level of care, you're you're able to function, but you don't have to cook. You know, all the meals are provided. Yeah. Light housekeeping is provided. Oh, good. And then they have laundry washer and dryers on each floor uh-huh. for you to do your own laundry. They don't do your laundry for you. Okay. And such. That should be okay, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then yeah. things don't disappear for me. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> there is that. That happens. <laughs> it's a very real thing. Mm-hmm. And then, the, you know, if things progress or she needed more care or someone to, you know, watch and monitor and actually mm-hmm. physically give her her medication because she wouldn't remember or whatever, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. or, or whatever, or for bathing purposes, then that would be somewhere else. Oh, and, such. and then they have a, another facility up there for those who just outright Alzheimer's that, you know, yeah, totally not went down. So, so that's good. It's good that there's... You know, different options and such. And like I said, she's adjusted and in the room and figuring, you know. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was on my own with, with the two of them last weekend. There was a little bit of squabbling back and forth. <laughs> but not too bad. Friday night. So, like, if you just wanted a turkey or a or a hammer or what? With gravy. Not even on the side. We know you miss it. <laughs> and so, anyway, but you can order a separate menu, which is nice, you know, yeah. that, that, you know, she can have something, but she doesn't. So. I know. I one of my high school friends that um, there's three of us that stayed in right, right, right. that's so good she put herself in one of those places and I was surprised about a year later she took herself up to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She flunked. <laughs> she flunked senior living. <laughs> this is not for me. Yeah, well, you know. And she actually found a house not too far from me. Her granddaughter, who has, you know, has her group. <coughs> so she's close by to them. And um, she was a teacher, so she volunteered in this old class. And she was a teacher, and or something like that. you got to have a purpose. Yeah. You always want to have yeah. a purpose. Yeah. Regardless. So I, I was so surprised when I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I bought a house. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's not crazy about cooking. But yeah, but nowadays, too, there are so many other options and everything. You don't need to be a cook or have to cook, you know. I mean, and, yeah, because you don't. 
in California, we have a lot of good choices. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in the grocery store, you can pick up a roasted chicken and pick up yeah. a bag of salad. You can have a roast chicken yeah. and bread yeah. one night and then a chicken yeah. salad another night. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to. It's not, it's not like it was. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. I figure let's uh, do a time of prayer before we get into the message. I'd kind of like to start off with praise reports. I know we've had some good things happen. And I know, Tom, you were talking. and so let's, let's share those with the whole group. Robin got, well, we got the first load of stuff in her apartment. She's got a place. Yeah. woo <laughs> But hey, but there it is. she's got a place. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the things that she used to go to She sometimes used the wheelchair, I guess, and then always coming kind of around for a wheelchair, so <clears throat> she just we'll figure something out. Yeah. Get her a narrower wheelchair. Oh, it's they do make the narrower ones. So. They do. So you can see the ones that they used to put you on the plane, they have to be seen. Right. <clears throat> Ways yeah. I, yeah, I know they make narrower wheelchairs. Yeah, yeah. I know for me, I couldn't use a narrower wheelchair for some reason. Yep. <laughs> um, for a week there, I was took a whole week off work. That's unusual. Sixteen yeah. never yeah. happened. Never. Oh yeah. They didn't do that business. <laughs> no, they didn't. But uh, they're having problems. <laughs> yeah, they had to come back to. <laughs> yeah, they're struggling. Gotta go Big, straight. Bigger yeah. problems. It makes me look good. When right? Things yeah. break when I'm gone, right? Uh, right. <laughs> and also, I would like Ted to go over by Debbie for a minute. Okay. Talking <laughs> Oh, a special thing there for you. We just want to thank you guys for all you've done for us here. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to let the boss open it. The boss. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so very much. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Oh, boy, a whole bunch of people signing. <laughs> well, thank you so very much. I know yesterday we celebrated Debbie's birthday. And we went to go see the, the new Star Wars movie. And then Debbie reminded me of the fact that our very first date was to watch the original Star Wars movie. Go, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back in 77, yeah. yeah. Wow. That was sneaky, Jim. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. I'm not giving anything away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I bet they said, may the force be with you. <laughs> well, I will give away one secret. Lots of lightsaber battles. Yeah. They, they also said that if you are, uh, you know, there's a lot of flashing lights. Mm -hmm. right. And it can cause an epileptic like seizure yeah. that is possible. When I was uh, in, in high school, I went to, we took industrial electronics. And, you know, in the second year, when, as we were really learning things good, we, we, pe we'd have people bring in stuff for us to fix. We'd fix TVs and all kinds of stuff. And I remember one of the fun things I did is we had a TV set up. We had a wood, little wooden frame that we put the tube on, you know, that was back in the day. And then you have the, the, the rest of it over here. So you could see the inside guts. And you had, the, you, um, you had this one wire that goes over to the side of the, the, um, of the uh, TV. 25,000 volts in that wire. Whoa. 
And so when we had people, when we had tours come through to, 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 the, to the school, because we had, we had all kinds of things. You know, you had auto mechanics, you had cosmetology, you had cooking, and, you know, just all different classes. And so when people came around, they'd see the TV. There's old Monty Hall making a deal. And I'd say, now, remember, there's $25,000. or $25,000. Wouldn't that be nice? 25,000 volts in this wire. Don't grab this wire. And I would grab the wire. <laughs> We've had we had a couple of hundred different people came through the classes all you know to tour. I only had one person ask me, "Well, why are you able to grab the wire?" And I said, "Well, when I'm grabbing this wire, you don't see me touching this frame over here, because that would make the circuit." Mm-hmm. So that's the secret there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but that was fun. When I was in auto mechanics, somebody would be sit and doing something over there. He would hold hands and do the spark plug. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Everybody would hold hands, and then the last person. Yeah. 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 You do. You do know that uh, churches. You know, actually, actually, a children's church is like an electrician's shop. That's where live wires are well grounded. <laughs> yeah. I, and of course, you're feeling better. That's good. Um, yeah, it's no fun, especially for the holidays, being sick. So. I stayed home Thanksgiving by myself. Oh. First time ever. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy it? Well, I just watched movies and I just I was plopped on the sofa the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. Watch watch my movies. So yeah. that was a good time. Yeah. But I would have been bitter off at the house and with everybody and Yeah. I, I, I just Yeah. 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 Tuesday night for New Year or New Year's Christmas Eve, I'll be telling my Christmas story. I call it the the bad, the glad, the bad, the sad, and the glad. It's kind of a variation of Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future, and it'll be ten minutes or less. So that's pretty amazing. If you look at the podcast, you see most of my sermons have been going 30, 40 minutes. So. <laughs> Prayer requests. Continued healing for Cece. Continued healing for Cece. And I know Gary is with a, with a friend of his whose wife was killed. In that uh, that DUI accident on uh, was that San Juan, yeah, and yeah, his, his wife died in that accident, and Gary's over there just hanging around with him. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. Perfect yeah. ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Someone had asked this gentleman if he wanted his kid to be put away for life because the kid that hit her was yeah, eighteen. And that kind of mercy is. Oh, yeah. I used to be that kid. (laughs) Yeah. Just thank God I got sober when I did because the roads were not safe when I was out there. Yeah. I know when you were giving your story, um, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, years ago, and we used to, we lived in San Antonio. And we went to John Hagee's church. He's one of the big, uh, you, know, you know, TV ministries. You know, you know, you see, you see him on TV. He looks like he's a behemoth of a man. 
Well, Debbie's taller than he is. <laughs> he is 5'1", five 5'1", one. Five one or 5'2", five something like that. It's so funny. He has a special pulpit built just for him. And he, he preached the sermon on abortion. And he introduced the subject, and he says, point number one, if you've had an abortion, there is forgiveness in Christ Jesus. If you're 18 and you're driving drunk and you kill somebody, there is forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Bottom line. That's why we call this church New Life, right? Mm -hmm. We need to also continue to pray for Julie's sister, Roxanne. Yes. Okay. Any, Any others? cancer I yes it's it's still very very bad she goes every two weeks to Arizona mm-hmm. the cancer center there and she gets her treatments and who knows how much longer it's going to be her name her name is uh, Tina Tina, Tina? Perez Campbell Tina Tina yes and she's she's very faithful in God and she's always posting beautiful verses and she's not giving up. She's not giving up. She's she's a grandmother and but she's not even fifty. And mm. she still has a full life ahead. But it doesn't look good for her. Right. So please keep her in your prayers. Okay. I pray for her every day. Absolutely. Every day. Let me steal your list, Deb, so I can I'll lead us in prayer. Yep, my memory's not as good as it used to be. That's why I'm stealing Debbie's list. So let's pray. Well, Father, thank you for your blessings and thank you for you being so good to us when we don't deserve it. You sent Jesus to die on the cross and he did it. He died, he was buried, and he rose again to give us new life. Thank you for that. And thank you for for Robin's new apartment. Thank you for for Jim feeling so much better and for for Cece feeling somewhat better. I pray continued healing for her, that you would get her over this thing. We pray for Gary as he's ministering to his friend. Thank you for what his friend is doing in saying this kid needs another chance. I pray for this kid that you would get someone to him to share the gospel with him. I also pray that you would get him to help to get over the alcohol. And alcohol is a such a dangerous thing. And Lord, we pray for, for Roxanne, Julie's sister, that you would you would just be with her and and heal her. Cece's niece, Tina, with her cancer treatment, Lord, give her grace, give her healing, and I'd say give her a testimony, but she's already got one. But let her spread that word and be encouraging to others. Lord, I pray for this church as we go into the new year. Lord, we want you to, this is your church, Lord. You build it. You said that you, you would build your church, and we ask you to do that. That you would bring more people in to hear the gospel, and that you would grow it. And I pray for each member here that you would bless them, give them a good Christmas, and be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the list, Debbie. <clears throat> Did y'all get a copy of? The, I printed out the scriptures, and the reason why I did that, uh, here I'll get, I'll get you one.
There you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah. If you were to look into my Bible, you would find I mark it up. I highlight. I circle. I put cross-references in all that kind of crazy stuff. And really, when, when you let the Bible talk to you, it is God who is talking to you. And so I thought I would uh, put the scriptures up there on the screen as we talk about the wise men, the magnificent wise men. And there's a lot of stuff to learn. In fact, did you know that Jesus' birth almost caused a war? How's that for a surprise? Prince of Peace. Yeah, the Prince of Peace. And he... <laughs> Well, yeah, it actually, it actually did. In order to, to demonstrate that, wake up my iPad here. Come on. Okay. New technology for me to play with here. So, so basically, to give you a little bit of history, well, who were the wise men? The, uh, the wise men were actually, they're, in some of the newer Bibles, they're actually called magi which is the proper name for them. It's, it's, uh, in fact, uh, the, the Magi were an ancient tribe of people that were very prominent in the East, and they, they were known for their um, occultic abilities. They had the ability to, you know, to you know, div use divination, different things like that. They, became, they were really big into interpreting dreams, they were known for the wisdom. In fact, if you go back into the book of Daniel, you will find that whenever the king had a dream, King Nebuchadnezzar, he had this dream. No one could interpret. Who did he, he bring in? He brought in the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Well, basically, that's all a bunch of names for the Magi. The Magi were the king's advisors. And in fact, no king in Persia ever rose to power without the blessing of the Magi. They were the kingmakers. And then in, in, the, in the book of Daniel, when all these guys couldn't interpret the dream, and Daniel did, the king made Daniel the head of the Magi. And so one of the things that he did is he passed on the Old Testament scriptures to them. Now, admittedly, this group of, of people, they would uh, kind of mix you know, some of the other stuff that they were doing, but they knew about the prophecies. They knew about how someday a Messiah would be born, a king. And that kind of passed down through the years. You know, this is hundreds of years later. And then when, when Jesus was born, well, guess who God brought? Hundreds of years of preparation, you know, showing them the scriptures. And they knew when they saw the star, hey, it's time. Now, a little bit of other history. This is where the, um, where the potential for a war could have happened, but it didn't, fortunately. Um, we have four empires, basically, that, that Daniel prophesied about. The Babylonian Empire, which is... Kind of like in, oh, they were, well, that's Iraq, down in here in this area. Isn't that cool? I can do that laser pointer. Woo. And then later they were, they were replaced by the Medo-Persian Empire, which they're a little actually further out here. And then, of course, after the, the Old Testament closed, we have the, you know, Greece, Alexander the Great, and then finally the Roman Empire. And even though the Roman Empire was the dominant empire when Jesus was born, they were all through here. You still had the Persian Empire out here. They never fully conquered them. There was always tension between the two empires. And even though they were in a time of peace at the time Jesus was born, we talked about that last week, um, there was still this tension. And whenever they had wars between the two, Guess where they got? Guess where those wars were fought? Right there. Number of wars just before Jesus was born. Battle between the two empires. Isn't that cool? I can circle things. 
got a nice laser pointer. And so when the, when the Magi came, first of all, the songs we sang today, don't get your theology from Christmas songs. There were not three kings. We don't know how many they were. There was a whole bunch. They came with mounted cavalry. They came with a small army with them. And when, uh, when Herod saw that small army packed uh, right outside of his town, of Jerusalem, and knowing his own troops were off on assignment someplace, he had very little protection there in the city. So he was tippy-toeing. And they were the kingmakers. So when, you got to remember, Caesar Augustus was old. Herod himself was old. The king in Persia was old. And here comes these kingmakers saying, where is he as born king of the Jews? You see the, the tension that that would cause right here where Jesus was born. So let's go into the scriptures. How's that for like way cool? Way cool. Just to let you know that this thing I hear that's like a header, that is not part of the actual scriptures. The thing that says wise men from the east, that's not an actual verse. Just to let, let you know that. Something else that's actually not in the actual scriptures, you know, your verse numbers. Those were added much later. So that's not part of the... So let's, look at, let's just take a look at this. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and bring out a highlighter. So we've got the wise men from the east. Now, now let's see what we can learn. And, this, and if you want to do some interactive, if you want to shout out some things that you're learning here, uh, we, we can do that. It says, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Now, what do you learn there? What was that? Well, yeah. Yeah, so they came, yeah, they came from the east. We got that. We talked about the wise men. And that's these guys right here. And where did they go to? They went to Jerusalem. They didn't go to Bethlehem right away. And probably that was because, hey, the king of Israel was born. Let's, let's go check it out. And they went to the capital city of, 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 of uh, Judea there. We know Herod the king. And just to let you know, he died. Oh, let me get, get a smaller ink. I also have an eraser here. How's that for cool? <laughs> So Herod died, oh, I write bad, 4 B.C. And, of course, Jesus was born in, in Bethlehem. So you, seeing, you, seeing my, you see my thought process here? As you dig through the scriptures and you can learn things. And then they came to Herod and they asked the question, where is he who is born king of the Jews? What, what, what really hops out at that one? How about this word right here? Born. Let me make that a little bigger. Now, are kings born? No. A baby may be born. He may be prince. But later he becomes the king. Jesus is born the king. From the instant he was born, something else that leaps out at me. Past tense. Good call, Deb. Has been. I'm going to mark that. Past. And the reason why you have those sheets of paper, if you wanted to write some of these things on your, on your sheet, that's why you have them. Okay? Good call, Debbie. Okay. Here's, here's another biggie. How about this phrase? King of the Jews. Herod's title given to him by Caesar is King of the Jews. Interesting note, Herod was not a Jew. He was an Edomian, which is 
from the tribe of, of, of Edom in the Old Testament. So he wasn't a full Jew. Historians say that whenever the Jewish people would challenge him on the title King of the Jews, they say, but, you know, your genealogy. And he would order the genealogies to be burned so they couldn't prove it. I mean, he was not a nice guy. Okay? And so we have seen a star in the east and we have come. Why? Why did they come? To worship him. That's what they came for. They didn't, you know, you know if, if, he, if they were really looking to grab, I'm just kind of wondering, why didn't they just, you know, say, okay, we want, this is the king, we want to take the king and go crown him, and they didn't do that, if you notice. And then what amazes me is every time I read through the scriptures, it's like the Holy Spirit is showing me new things. There are times when I will say, wow, this is new. I haven't seen this before. Well, I've got a stack of Bibles, quite literally. And I have one old one that I, had, that I have gone through cover to cover multiple times. And I have written so many notes in there. I, I've kind of retired it, mainly because it's, it's wearing out. And I don't, want to, I don't want to totally break it. But any time I find a new insight... I will go back to that Bible, look up at that verse to see if I had noticed it before and forgot. And so many times I say, I'd say, oh, years ago I discovered this. I have forgotten it since then. But the other night I saw something in this verse and I checked all my other Bibles to see if I had ever seen this before and I hadn't. Let me show you where it is. I'm going to make it in red. His star. His star. I had never noticed that before. Pretty fascinating. It wasn't just any star. Yep, time to get the Debbie's getting paper towels. We have a slight emergency here. I will edit these comments out of the uh, podcast. <laughs> we'll take a break. <laughs> Or I could be mean and leave them in. <laughs> there comes paper towels. All right. This is the church in action. It is. You spill spill some coffee and everybody goes running to help. And I'm guilty enough. I don't want to get in the way. His star. Now, I've read various commentaries and people who write articles about this type of thing, and they're they're trying to go back into archaeology to, or not archaeology, but but look back in the astronomy to see if they can find, you know, some type of um, like a comet or was it a bunch of planets lining up? You know, during that time, yeah, there were a bunch of planets that kind of lined up together and, and could have possibly lined up and made a great big light. And I kind of doubt it that that was really what it was. I'll share what my thought is here in just a few minutes. That's true. So if they saw his star in the east, they were from the east, they had to travel west, which means they did not follow the star initially. How's that for pretty amazing? I used to have a lot of fun with that one. I said, well, if they saw the star in the east, and they were from the east, were they walking backwards when they followed the star? <laughs> We'll get into it in a minute, but here's what I think, I think really happens as far as that's concerned. Yes, they saw the star, 
and they knew from their all their records and looking at the scriptures that they that Daniel had passed down to them and so forth, they knew this was a sign that the, the Messiah, the King of the Jews, was to be born. And they just at that point independently traveled to where Herod was in order to find out where to, you know, what was next. But yeah, I had never seen that thing about his star specifically. They, they, you know, wow, it just, it just kind of blew my mind. So when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. All this cavalry outside the gate. And, and it says, all oh, Jerusalem with him. See, when Herod was troubled, everybody was troubled. Herod had a temper. It's like in the, the old saying, this is, you know, when mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Well, this is even truer of kings, especially ones who have bad tempers. And we'll find out about the bad temper here in just a little bit. So, so, so here's these guys, the kingmakers. Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. We have come to worship him. Herod had no clue. He knew there was going to be a Messiah. He had no clue where he was. And this is the part that just blows my mind. And when he had gathered... All the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them. The, the old King James says he demanded of them. So this word here, inquired, no, that's a much stronger word. He says, I want to know, and I want to know now. He wanted to know where the Christ was to be born. And this is the part that amazes me. And so they said to him, right off top of their head. They didn't have to look anything up. They just knew. In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. They knew the scripture, and I've often wondered why, after they were called in to see King Herod, and Herod demands to know where a Messiah is going to be born, was there anything in the back of their mind that said, we better go check this out? But apparently they did nothing. And reading from the history of the time, a lot of these guys were the Sadducees, who were mainly just yeah, they knew the scriptures, but they really didn't believe the prophecies. It's said that the Sadducees, they didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in miracles. They didn't believe in life after death. That's why they were sad, you see. Very bad pun. Okay. <laughs> They knew right off the top of the head. And then Herod, when he had, here's a key word right here, secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And that reference to time, really important, because you'll see, the, you know, based upon his actions later, why that was important. And so here's where... He, you know, here, here this is interesting. He says, so, so he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go search diligently for the young child, not a baby. That's a big clue right there. They did not show up in the stable. I don't care how many Hallmark cards you look at, they did not show up there. He says, go and search diligently for the, for the young child and bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. I have one thing to say about that. Liar, liar, pants on fire. He had no intention of worshiping Jesus, but he's playing diplomacy there. You know, it's like, like any politicians. Do you know how to tell when a politician is lying? You can see their lips move. So, And... Whenever I'm talking politics with people, I always tell her, says, hey, we've got the best politicians money can buy, right? Pray 
for our political leaders. That's what the Bible commands us to do. Really pray for them, even if you disagree with them. That's like hugely important. And so often we're not guilty. We're guilty of not doing that. So just thought I'd point that out. And when they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star, there it is, they had seen in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. That's why I, I cannot see how a natural star could be the star. The word star in, in the Greek just you know, means like it could be a star, it could be a bright light. If you remember back in the, the Old Testament times when, when the people of Israel were wandering around in the wilderness, what did they follow? A cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. It's called the Shekinah glory. I think that's what it was. I really do, because God could have this, like this pillar, he could have it up there, you know, like a star, and they'll see that up there, wow, they go to Jerusalem, and then as they let, leave Jerusalem, boom, there's the, there it is. And there is when they literally followed that light. And it came, and just kind of hovered over the house where Jesus was, just like it hovered over the, uh, the tabernacle in the wilderness. And you think about it, the tabernacle housed the Ark of the Covenant, and which is where the, you know, the, the glory of God rested. And here in this house was God himself. Pretty amazing. And so then when we go on, it says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Are you kidding? Of course they did. Because they knew this was like ama- amazing stuff. And so... And when they had come into the house, there it is, they're not in the stable anymore. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and their reaction, they fell down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures, presented him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Three gifts. I think that's where we get the idea of three kings from. There were three gifts. Yeah, there was more than just three. There was a whole, whole, uh, whole bunch of them. Here's the amazing thing. They came, brought very expensive gifts, and they expected nothing in return. They just wanted to worship him. Wow. How unselfish could they be? And then being divinely warned in a dream. <laughs> there's those dreams again. You know, there's a lot of dreams in this chapter. They, that they should not return to Herod. They departed for their own country by another way. They snuck around a different road. I'm sure Herod had soldiers who were kind of following, seeing what they were doing, spying on them. And then when they went off in a different direction... You know, and God, God warned them, don't, don't go back and tell them. And then going on, as when they had departed, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a, in a dream. Here we go again, saying, Arise, take the young child, his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring word to you, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. I'm this kid, had a target on him. It's just the devil was trying to mess things up for God ever since the very beginning. And here he was, here's Jesus, God in the flesh. And the devil says, man, if I could kill this kid, didn't happen, obviously. Well, it eventually did, but in God's timing. And when he arose, he took the child by night. Now, it's hard enough to travel at night here today when we have cars and street lights and everything else. It was dangerous to travel by night in those days. And I know I've had, I, 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 of course, we all dream. And I've had pre, some pretty vivid dreams. I've never actually dreamed and saw an angel. I do know a lot of times when I, the sermons when I preach, believe it or not, I, I will... 
I will be dreaming about the passage, and a lot of times God will give me an outline for how to do it, and then I wake up and I write it down. But to have a, see an angel in a dream be woken up in the middle of the night after seeing this thing, and then, this, then to have the courage to say, Mary, we got to go now. we got to go now. Instant obedience. I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago when we, did, when we talked about Joseph. And he says, and to remain there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled. It was prophesied that Jesus would go down to Egypt. Because it says, out of Egypt, I called my son. And then we'll see why he had to leave here. And then Herod, when he saw that he was, and here's one that I hadn't seen before too, when he had been deceived by the wise men. King James says he was mocked by the wise men. You know, oh, that doesn't go over too good when you, when you deceive or mock a king. It's a good way to get the bad things to happen to you. Because he was exceedingly angry. I mean, he was fuming. Like in the old movies, you know, he would have had steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> it always cracks me up when they do that. And to show you how angry he was, he put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and, and in all its districts, all the neighboring t- area around Bethlehem. Soldiers come running in, busting down doors. See a little child with the sword. Can you imagine the horror? All these women, and I'm sure the men too, just weeping for the inhumanity of soldiers coming in and just murdering innocent little babies. He murdered them from two years old and under according to the time, remember that? Which he had determined from the wise men. Too often we read over that so quickly. And it's just absolutely good to just stop. Let your imagination run. Try to imagine what it was like being there. Soldiers busting down. And I have a feeling, and I, I can't prove this from scriptures, but I, it, just, it just feels like that, that as Joseph and Mary were exiting the city this way, the soldiers were coming in at the same time, which is why it was so important for, G, for Joseph to get up in the middle of the night and, as we say, beat feet and boogie, get out of there. And this, again, was prophesied in Scripture. This was fulfilled, what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, and here's the quote right here, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. It's one thing to have grief, and we just talked about that this morning with the, this woman who was killed in that car wreck. And it's one thing to have grief and have someone comfort you. But it says that they were refusing to be comforted because the it was just so... The grief was so heavy that there was no comfort. It was a horrible thing. And that shows you how how much of a monster Herod was. This was the devil going after Jesus. And a whole bunch of collateral damage, as it were. And then to show you what happened after that, Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, here we go, in a dream again, to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child, his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Yea. And he went and took the young child, his mother, and came to the land of Israel. He was kind of looking, okay, where am I going to live? And when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judah instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Another monster, by the way. And being warned by God in a dream. Here we go again. A lot of dreams. He turned aside into the region of Galilee. 
And he came and dwelt in the city called Nazareth. That's up there by the, uh, by the Sea of Galilee. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. And I've mentioned this here before a few, a few months back. That phrase where it talks about he shall be a Nazarene. When you look up the actual scripture in Isaiah, it says something about, it's Isaiah 11.1. 1. And I'm having to look it up because I wasn't planning on saying this. It says, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its root. Where do you get Nazareth from that? I'll tell you where. The Hebrew word for branch is Nazar. That means a branch. The town of Nazareth means sprout town. The idea being is if you cut off a tree, sometimes later on you'll see a branch, a little twig that will grow up in the middle of that tree stump. And if you were here on that Sunday, you saw the picture that I had posted of the tree stump with a little twig. And I said, that is what this church reminds me of. Yes, this church was much bigger at one time, and it's down to what we have here. But that is that little twig. There's life in the branch. Just like there's life in this church. This church is called New Life for a reason. And so that's pretty much the story of the wise men, of Herod. We talked about shepherds last week. And on Tuesday night, Christmas Eve, you're all welcome to show up. Let's light those candles and let's celebrate. We're going to sing a lot of Christmas songs that night. It's just going to be a simple, we're not, it's not going to be complicated. But it's a time of worship. And for me, that's the highlight of the, of, of, uh, of, of the Christmas season, is to gather around and light the candles and you know, for so many years, I never got a candle. Hard to hold a candle while you're playing the, on the, playing the piano. <clears throat> I am debating whether I should just play my recording of Silent Night while I hold the candle. <laughs> I'm debating whether I should do that or not, or maybe I'll have somebody else actually hold the candle and then light the first candle and have it pass around so I can be playing. That's probably what I'm going to do. So, well, thank you, Lord, for this story and for how you speak to us from the scriptures, how you teach us how important it is to obey when God speaks something to your heart. I think back on how many, I'll be honest, how many times I have missed opportunities to witness because I didn't speak up when I was told to. But there's grace and forgiveness. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus coming. And for everyone here. And the fact that we live in a country where we can celebrate without fear. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Was this a hit or a bomb? The way I did this. Good. <laughs> you like that, huh? I'll have to figure up something better to do with the uh, with the music, though. That was kind of hard to keep <laughs> having to push the button and make the next uh, verse come up. Um, I'm kind of debating whether I should let Debbie do that with the other iPad. I'll have to ask her really, 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 really nice because that's that's the way marriages work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's one way to do it. Or we can do it with the computer, with the PowerPoint presentation. That's the other well, way to. Do it. It's, it's going back to the full worship team. Full worship team will go back to doing that. Yes, but for Tuesday night, the, the thing I like about this is that the, the amount of preparation time. Because whenever we do the worship songs, we have to actually create the PowerPoint presentation, put the words in there, and the slides and. And uh, we've got a whole bunch of them already made up with most of the songs that we do, but a lot of them are, the, the text is real tiny, or you know, we have to fix every slide. 
There's a lot of work to that, so I think I might just do this for Tuesday night. I know I always feel, you know, after the last song is sung on Christmas Eve, whew, mission accomplished. For so many years, I was in charge of the Christmas Eve service, and again, this year. But uh, I always feel a thank you, Lord. Christmas is uh, here. And all the hustle and bustle of the shopping and everything else is done. Now let's focus on what Christmas is really about. Is that a prayer request I hear? <laughs> yeah. I remember one. Yeah. I remember one one Christmas Eve. Um, we had bought all the presents, got them all wrapped. We had put them underneath the tree. We figured, great, we got presents for everybody. And our dogs come over. Hur, 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 paw. <laughs> I had to run out to the store to try to find a doggy toy to to put in the uh, in, you know, to wrap up. We brought the doggy toys home, wrapped them, put them underneath the tree. The dogs were watching, and yet they they got all excited when we unwrapped it for the dog. And, and oh, it's my present, my present. Oh, oh, oh. And then <laughs> that was crazy dogs. <laughs> or just just getting into the excitement. Yeah, I'm glad you all came. It, you know, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll admit that sometimes I. I look out at a, an empty room, and it's almost time for church to start, and I wonder, is anybody got to come? And then when you all come piling in right at the last minute, the fact that you're here really makes me happy. Thank you. So. Well, should I tell them the story of the offering? <laughs> it's my fault. Last week, I took the offering, and I put it in the bag in my computer bag where my computer is it is still in the computer bag (laughs) so yeah so bring it next week I think it's kind of uncouth to take up an offering on Christmas Eve but I promised Jim I would get him the bag back (laughs) yeah Debbie will remind me for sure And see you all Tuesday night. You know what? Hmm. You're the only one that I've ever heard. Well, there may be others, but um, about Daniel Mm -hmm. being influenced to the Magi. Mm -hmm. Because I always had that feeling. Well, they were sent to, they were taken away to... um, 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 that area, you know, yeah, in the, in the captured and then taken to. Uh,